Hi, everybody. It's Kelly, obviously. Dirt, oh, since you're watching my channel, I would figure that uh, you might know uh, who you're watching, right? That makes sense. Unless you're just flipping through and you just happen to land on my channel, which is cool because, you know, hey, we can all use all the help we can get, right? Well, um, today I wanted to work on a project and I don't quite know if I'm going to put it in my upcoming auction or not because I really just kind of want to see how it comes out. Um, but first things first, I did finish one of the items from my auction and I wanted to share it. This one I call Diamonds and Pearls and it's a wine bottle that I've decorated. That one slid up. Fix that. But yeah. So I call this one Dur Diamonds and Pearls. This is going to be in the auction. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a canvas that'll go with it that'll match it as far as, you know, making it a set because my other bottles, I put a small canvas with it, you know. If you wanted to set it on a table in the corner or something and then hang a little canvas on the wall behind it or something or just crop it up next to it or something. I don't know. But a couple of glue stringies. But yeah, so this is this is one of my uh, auction items. It's going to be in my auction on August 4th, uh, 2018 at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I haven't made a video in a little bit because I've been working my hiney off trying to put together as many items as I can to go in the auction. So I've been kind of, kind of overwhelmed and then I just had to take a couple days and then my internet went out for a few days so that didn't help. And then after all that stressing found out that the reason the internet was out. I mean, we got a new modem, we got a new router, we got everything. Come to find out, one certain button had gotten pushed on my router when my grandchildren were here and we didn't know anything about it. And what that did was it turned the router off. And in essence, turning the internet off. So, I mean, we were just, boy, I felt stupid by the time all of that was done. But hey, it was a new router anyways, you know, we weren't com completely uh, up on all the ins and outs and everything of this, this router that we had gotten. But needless to say, and then after all of my, you know, cramming and stuff, I just kind of had to take a break for a few days because it was just a bit much and my mojo was unempty, so to speak. So... Okay, so this is my thoughts, and I would love, love, love if anybody had any ideas or any suggestions to please put it in the comments below, because I do read all my comments. I do comment on them, on most of them. If, if you get a like from it, it's because there, obviously there was no reason to comment. It's just I appreciate your comment, and thank you very much, but I do read every single one of them. I mean, I check, I check every day, so... Any information would be grateful. I looked online for um, uh, a few days and could not find anything close to what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to wing it and hopefully this will come out kind of cool. Like I said, I haven't decided whether or not I want to put this in my auction yet. And that's a maybe. You know, it depends on how it turns out. But I bought this pre made. Uh, Victorian house. Um, I got it online. I forget which company I got it from offhand. I'll have to look it up. Probably should have had that info, but I didn't. Um, it's really, really light. Uh, it almost feels like it's balsa wood. If you don't know what balsa wood is, it's the kind of wood they use when they make paper airplane or not paper airplanes, those model airplanes. They need a light wood to be able to, you know, keep it up in the air. But when I, when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, how awesome would it be if I made 
um, a house like this and decorated it in steampunk. Yeah. Now, I don't have a lot of things that, uh, you know, that I can just open up a drawer and pull out. So it usually takes me a few days to uh, prepare. And then half the time I forget some of the steps and I end up doing them on camera anyway. But one of the things, uh, I was at Hobby Lobby uh, yesterday with my dad and they had these little wood, wood pieces. Okay. And they're gears. And I thought, how awesome would that be? You know, they've got the different kinds and everything. And then um, to top those off, and that was an accident. I wasn't even looking for these. I went ahead and got out some of my uh, Sculpey clay and some of the new uh, molds I got in the mail recently that I have shown. Um, oops. And I went ahead and I used one of the clays that I don't use very often. And I figure if I didn't like it, I could always paint over it. But you see all those? These are all made from Sculpey. And they were uh, baked. Uh, 275. They were supposed to only be baked for like 15 minutes. And um, I didn't hear the timer go off. <laughs> so... And then dad went out there, so I thought, okay, well, he'll get them out. And he didn't go in the kitchen. He just went straight out to the uh, out to the backyard and uh, was sitting on the patio reading. So these got cooked pretty good. But because of that also, they're a little bendable, which is cool because, you know, any flexibility is awesome. Now, when you do stuff like this, right, you're going to get the backs, which... You know, it's not going to be completely even all the way around. And if you don't like that and you want it even, all you have to do... Oops, let me turn around. I moved some stuff. Okay. So all you have to do is get a little piece of sandpaper, right? And just smooth that out. Whoops. And actually because this is so small what I would probably do is just you know do one of those uh, but I love these um, like the clock molds you see that and I have no idea where the hands went huh I have the hands or the arms or the whatever you call them for the clock and I don't see them oh well I'll figure something out but I did a couple of those, and I did some bigger ones, and I thought, and I can paint them. They don't have to stay black, but, you know, I mean, how cool would that, whoops, you can't see that, Durr. Okay, how cool would that be right there? But, okay, so first things first, let's get all these out of the way. I already put, it's a, it was a clear, a clear coat, a gesso, which is kind of funny, but I coated it in clear gesso because it is such a light wood and balsa wood is very very porous I don't know how well it worked with clear gesso um, I don't have I didn't have a primer a prime yeah paint for priming so I figured I would use some clear gesso and it's homemade so it's not like I wasted you know a whole bunch of stuff but I um, I coated all surfaces with the clear gesso, so I'm hoping that that was some sort of a protectorant. Now, what I plan on doing is I'm going, I'm going to mix up some white just to kind of help as a... Oh, that's a chunk. We don't want that chunk. No, 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 no. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's pull that goopy out. Ugh. Ah, oh, come on. That is, like, so gross. Ugh. Okay. Well, that's what towels are for, right? And rags. And more goopies coming out. So, ugh. There we go. Okay, I don't mean to gross you guys out, but that was, like, a consistency of snot. Yeah. And yes, I know this because I am a mother and a grandmother of 14, 15. I lost count. 
All right, so let's get a little bit more there. Uh, let's see. Let's put this is some gunmetal gray. Now I'm trying to think in terms of uh, steampunk colors, right? And yeah, I'm putting them close by or close to each other. Here's some black. This one's called licorice. I got this from the Goodwill, so I don't even know how. Oh, that came out really nice. Cool beans. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, rich espresso next to it as well. Now, what this is going to do is this is just going to give my brain some options. And steampunk is rather industrial, so that's kind of where we're going to leave it at. I'm just going to, I'm just going to start painting and see where that takes us. Oh, that's kind of nice. Look at that contrast. See that? So I'm going to start it off with just one color. Well, these are two colors, duh, but all right. And since you don't want to sit here and watch me do this, I'm not going to change any colors or anything until I'm done with this coat. So I'm going to pause this and I will come back when I'm done painting this first coat. Okay. See you in a second. Okay, guys, um, I'm just about done. I want to show you how far I've gotten. Okay. Now this is just with those colors that I had up front, you know, at the beginning. Now what I did realize is that um, I had to water the paint down for it to, to spread enough because I, apparently the one coat of clear gesso wasn't enough. I probably should have found a primer, but I didn't and that's okay because um, look at the mottled effect it gave with the water down and the, the three different or four different color paints. I mean, that looks almost like a haunted house instead of a steampunk thing. But um, in my opinion, there's not quite much or there's not much of a difference in terms of, you know, Victorian industrialism to me. Um, haunted houses normally give the impression of uh, steampunky type scenario but um, I haven't done the very top because I need something to uh, let me fix this there we go so I kind of needed something to hold on to I've got the back wall um, everything else is pretty much done but I've got the back wall and the top where the chimneys are well, the chimney in the tower. So what I'm going to do, just while I'm on camera here, I'm going to give myself a little bit more white. There, not a whole lot. And I think part of it is this black paint that I got from the Goodwill um, must be old because it's pretty thick. Yeah, see, this is just soaking up so much. It's like the minute I put the paintbrush down, I have to add more paint before I even make a stroke. So. Yeah. So watering it down kind of helped extend the paint some. And I've noticed in a couple spots where I've had to go back over and cover it because the paint was so watered down that it, you know, it's uh, wood bled through. So, but yeah, so other than that, and the top right here, I am done. And it took me a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure I got all the surfaces. So I was turning it upside down and sideways and, you know, kind of looking at what I call looking under the skirt. 
All right, so this is what we have so far. Now, like I said, this is just the base coat. This is not even, and I haven't even done the bottom, so I'm not worried about that. Not right now. But yeah, this is the base coat, and it's drying fairly quickly. So I'm going to get a baby wipe. And kind of clean all this up a little bit and decide what other colors I'd like to um, incorporate on the house itself. Now, I have to keep in mind that, uh, you know, say for instance, if I'm going to paint the, um, the clay pieces that I did, then obviously I'm not going to use all of the same colors because when you put it all together, it's all just going to look like one blah. There's going to be no delineation between any of the items or the um, pieces that are on the house. So I have to keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Clean out the paintbrushes really quickly. Now to do this, because the wood was so um, porous and everything, I had to put my, my decent I think this is a number 10. Because uh, this says a wash. It's a brush. I don't know. I can't see it. The paint's worn off. On ah, a paintbrush. Isn't that funny? The paint's worn off on a paintbrush. So I just grabbed an old icky, you know, one that I used for glue. So I can pounce and, and kind of, if it gets torn up, it gets torn up and I can... You know, I can just use a different brush, but, but on this note, that looks really, really daggum cool. I don't know what you guys think. It really does look like a haunted house more than anything. So, but let's, let's see. First things first, I want, I really want to do one of these clocks that uh, I did the mold on. Find it, there it is. Okay, there's that one. And for the clock, I'm thinking I want to do some one penny. Ooh! Oh, that wasn't cool. Okay, let's see if we can pull this off in one piece. No, it didn't want to come off. Ah, there we go. Okay, does side. Okay. Oh, well. Okay, so we meant to do that, right? And then I'm going to add a little bit of this metallic berry. Not a whole lot. Alright, and then, well, that's not quite what I want. Let me see if I can't find a stiffer. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Prime it a little bit. And then we're going to take this and just kind of... I'm not worried about brush strokes or anything like that. I'm really not. There's a little bit of water on this to help the paint get down in the little cracks and crevices between the, the raised edges to make sure that, you know, it's all in there. And do the outside. And that's kind of watered down, so that's a good thing. Put out a little bit of this berry. And all I'm doing is just kind of, since it's pretty wet, I just want to give it a little bit of 
extra oomph. Right, so let's see. Well, you can't really see the berry in it too much, can you? But you can when you're up close. And we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Add a little bit of this, a little bit more on it. And I wanted to see about. Well, that's kind of wet, so we'll leave that alone for now. All right, so with the little bit that I have left over, I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to kind of just brush over some of it and give it a little bit more uh, dimension. Just a little bit of shine, not a whole lot. Kind of make the roof look like it's a copper roof, you know, like a copper uh, sheets and stuff. Give that effect, maybe. What do you think? A little bit more? Maybe up here? And we'll kind of do the sides a little bit and the back. Uh, a little bit of water, kind of send that out some. What do you guys think? I put a little bit too much right there. Probably. Alrighty. Need some water. See if I can't thin that out some. Nope. Okay, so we use a little bit of gray. Kind of bring that back down. No, nope, that's not going to work. So, we need a little bit of black. Oh, way too much. Come on. What is up with these paints today? All right. That's a little better. I'll go back over it um, with a dry brush. But yeah, I don't want a whole lot of the, the worn penny on this. Just enough to make it, yeah. Uh, yeah, give me just a second. Come here and tell me what you think. Say hi, everybody, to Dad. Hi, everybody. Okay. All right. Does that kind of look like a copper, like it's copper tin or copper yeah. dur roof? It is a dur roof. A dur roof, yeah, a dur. Did you roof. get those wood ones? Those wood yes, ears? I did. Remember? I don't know if you picked them up. But I, I did. I did do that. So. All right. And on that note, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to run to Walmart with Dad. And I'll be back. So let me pause this. And I am back. Just got back from Walmart. And was looking for some things. Couldn't find. But that's okay. Now, this is dry. I'm wondering if we shouldn't put... 
maybe a little bit of blue on it for some uh, that patina looking that I want a dry one so I'm going to get a different brush because I don't want it I don't want it all wet That was too much. There we go. I'm going to wipe that off just a little bit. And actually, I probably could have waited. So I can use the rest of it on the house. Alright, I'm going to put that off to the side for a second. This is, oh, this is pretty dry. So what do you think so far? Let me move this out of the way. I think that's cool. Let's try a little bit of blue on the handle, the door handle. Maybe a little bit of blue on the uh, I don't know. We'll just see what where it takes us, right? Oh, I don't like this paintbrush, look what it does. No, I don't know. It's a Daily Rounding number eight, but I wonder if it's for like watercolor and not acrylic. Because it does not hold acrylic very well, not this style anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this this blue and just kind of do it on the sides. It's not very super noticeable, but just a little bit. Got some of the worn penny on this side. Let me just do a drop because I don't want a whole lot. So, how was everybody's summer so far? Me, it's too daggum hot. I do not like the heat. I like it when it rains. I like it when it's about 70 to 77 degrees. And even lower. I'm not a heat baby. My favorite time of the year is fall. And I think that is about it. I'm going to wipe this off. Set that aside. Now I was thinking, you know, maybe a small hot air balloon sticking up, you know, like right here in the back. I'll move it this way. You know, kind of like in this little area. But I don't know if that's practical. I might put a light bulb or something there instead. But let's see, I do know that I want 
this. I'm going to file this one section. Make sure it's not sticking out. See, it's got the little lips right there. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. So all I'm doing is just kind of filing that down a little bit. It's just a nail file I got from, you know, the Dollar Tree. You get two of them in a pack for a buck. They're perfect for, you know, sanding little, little uh, doodads and stuff. making sure and they're easy to store you don't have to worry about pieces of paper flying everywhere you know science sandpaper coming out of the out of your ears I mean I have some sandpaper but when you just need something really quick and really simple this works just great and I keep it in my pencil can okay so how do we want to do this what do you guys think right there Should I put something behind it? Maybe something like that. I think I will. But I need to paint these. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me paint. So I'm going to paint these up right here and um, I will be right back. Okay? Hi everybody. I'm back and I I was trying to work on some of the logistics and stuff and trying to figure out what would look good and this is what I have so far. So tell me what you guys think. Um, obviously I'm still not done. Um, I don't, I thought I was zoomed out, but I don't, I don't guess so. Let me see. Oh, okay. Sometimes it wants to work and sometimes it doesn't. But this is where I'm at so far. Okay, now I haven't, I said I haven't quite finished and I'm still working on the, the ifs and the who's it's and the what's it's, but, uh, what I might do. Ooh, I have an idea. Uh, let me look really quick. And it should be right here. And obviously, it's not. Let me see. I guess I just had an idea. Yay! And I... I found it. So that's a good thing. Okay, a piece of craft foam that I was given in a happy mail. And let's see if this works. Or, well, let's look really quick and we'll see if this works. And if this doesn't work, then I'll do it the other way. So what I was thinking is you know doing all right come on let go there some circles with my hole punch and make them look like rivets <sighs> except this is going to take a while so Okay, let me pause this since you guys know what I'm doing next. And when I get some of these punched out enough where I think I can, you know, work with, uh, I'll be back. I don't want to bore you guys just watching me, you know, punch out craft circles. 
okay, I'm back. Um, I got a bunch of these cut out, and I started throwing, you know, because I would cut it out, and then I would trim off the refuge so I could get to the next strip of um, felt so I could cop some more out. And then I got to thinking, you know, why would I want to throw these out, right? We're doing industrial stuff. And I thought, how cool would this be, you know, just to put these, like, down at the bottom just to give this some more uh, texture and some more uh, uh, steampunky look. I don't know. Uh, I figure I can, you know, paint it up and everything. But I'm just going to, I want to get it on here real quick because I really like this idea. And there we go. Now it's gonna stick. It sticks up a little bit uh, above the lid, the lip, lip. But I'm leaving it flush on the bottom, so that it'll set, you know, level. But I just thought, what an interesting way to use um, some more scraps instead of throwing them out, right? And then I've got some leftover that I can use to fill in the. Which is right. Oh, come on. There we go. Alrighty. So we'll push that down. And I'll trim the edges off. You know, when it cools. Whoops. See? But yeah, I thought that was a really, really interesting uh, way, like I said, to use up scraps and not throw away anything. Okay? So that's going to set like that. That's cool. I'm going to turn this on its side and see if. Oh, now see that fits perfect. The whole now look at that. You see that? It's the perfect size. So that is like flipping awesome. Ah, okay, day. Let's see. Let's go ahead and just run a bead of hot glue and quickly lay this down. Make sure, ouch, yeah, that's level. Make sure it's flush with the bottom, and it is. So, how cool is that? Let's see. I just, I don't know. Sometimes you come up with a good one, and sometimes it's crap. But this time it came out pretty good. Now I'm going to use the circles that I punched out as rivets. Okay, and I may end up needing more rivets, but for all intents purposes, I kind of wanted to get this done because I really, really liked this idea. So let me turn this on this side so I can go ahead and lay the bead. Oops. Okay. And go ahead and lay this down. And instead of burning the crap out of myself, I could probably use my spatula and it would work better, don't you think? There we go. Alright, so we have the front and the back. Well, the front and both sides, rather. I'm sorry. And let's... Uh, okay. That right there for now, and lay this on top. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. Yes, 
and press it down. A little bit of glue scooched out and we will scooch it back. I have no idea what that word is. Scooge. Okay, so it's something that, like I said, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's cut off a piece that looks a little bit better. Let me see. There we go. Come on. There we go. Now, to me, that is awesome because it also gives it some more textural depth. Yeah, I know they don't match, but that's okay. I think that industrial steampunk looking whatever is, you know, kind of throwing uh, recycled and scraps and everything together so that you can make something out of it that works. All right, so how's that? I'm wondering if I shouldn't just punch out more just to make more to go around here. Um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But. Oh no! Well, that didn't work very well, did it? That's because I was flip flopping it around and I wasn't paying attention. But my little uh, turnkey came off. We're going to put it back on there. I didn't have anything supporting it. I was going to put one of these on the back of it, but. It was so dark, I was going to put some silver on it and lighten it up some. There we go. This is like, it's uh, it says shake well, but it's a stencil paint. It's really, really thick. It's not as thick as a, like one of those buffin rubs, but um, it's almost. It's just, it's a very soft. And what I'm going to do is I'm wiping it off on a baby wipe a little bit. Just kind of soften it and then give this a little bit of light. You know, just kind of lighten it up some. And I'm going to take it off the baby wipe. I'm not getting any more. Okay. There we go. I really like this stuff. This is a, uh, I got it at Tuesday mornings and they only had three of them. So I got a silver, a gold, and then they had like an aqua. Uh, they call it turquoise, which is perfect. So, I mean, the three colors I would love to use all the time. And, you know, that was that. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to check it out first. And then I'm going to stick that right there. Ouch. Okay, that's hot. Mm. I want to let it set for a minute before I turn it so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it that well yet. That's okay. As soon as that sets, I'll be able to tilt it for you to look at more clearer. Now on the roof, I was thinking, I'm not going to use the hot glue because that would just take absolutely too long and it would not be practical. Oh, where did my glue go? Ah, there it is. Okay. Now, it's a good thing this stuff dries clear. 
Uh, yeah. I lost my lid the other day. It's a brand new uh, two or brand new bottle of Eileen's tacky glue. And I lost the lid. I can't find it anywhere. I even looked in the trash can to see if maybe it slipped off into there. So I've been just kind of wrapping it up with uh, some scotch tape to keep it from drying out. I just have to put new tape on it every time I use it. So, but is that set yet? Yeah, that's set. Ah, probably should have done that last, but that's okay. Now what I want to do is I want to these don't fall. Actually, I need to raise this on something. That works. Okay. Now I didn't paint these or decorate these or anything like that yet. All right, because honestly, I wanted to wait until I got them all on there. What I'm going to do is make a line here. And then I'm going to treat them like rivets. Probably didn't need to put that much glue on, but until I know what I want. Until I can figure it out, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay. You see, I'm putting rivets on there. Make it look like, you know, there's sheets of copper that have been riveted together. Like I said, I'm new at this. I'm not quite sure, you know, how to do what I'm doing, but it works for me. And that's the fun part. You know, you get to experience and you get to um, try out new things. And this is definitely a new thing for me. Um... I've been working on steampunk uh, for only a couple of months. Um, I do have uh, a, my steampunk surprise project. I'll bet if you guys have been watching my videos, you think I forgot, and I have not. Um, actually, we were waiting on um, a component of my uh, steampunk project, the surprise one, to be built. And it took a little bit longer because we had to have somebody else build the uh, some of the electronic um, components of it. And we had to have a professional because I do not know anything about electronics except I can handle a remote control really well. And that's about as close as I can come. Now, when these rivets dry, uh, I will probably just use a gel pen instead of trying to dig out some paint. To hit these itty bitty spots. Kind of. Eh, it did. Oh well. I didn't want it to, you know, I wanted to keep it as straight as I possibly could. Lines. And I hope that that will do.
Okay, so as those dry, actually I'm going to put a couple more on there. I'm going to put, oh, come on. Open, open, open. I guess I remember the old Mervyn's commercial, you know, that Mervyn's department store. It was a Christmas commercial quite a few years ago. And, uh, I believe it was Christmas. I could be wrong. I don't remember. I just remember people standing there, you know, at like, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning with their faces and their hands pressed up against the, the department store window doors and beating on it going open, open, open. All right. Now, since I can't reach in there with the glue, I'm going to... Come on. Ugh. All right. Let's grab some of this and set this in here. That'll work. Grab some of that. And set that in there. Okay. Yep, these are going to have to dry. Yep, just like that. And since I'm up on this side, I can probably uh, just do this since I'm here. Okay, that is just going to have to do. Now, what I did when I made my steampunk hat and I made all those rivets, oh my gosh. Um, if I remember right, I just used hot glue as my rivets, you know, and then just kind of rubbing buff some silver on them. I'm not a construction worker, so I can't tell you the, if, you know, the logistics of riveting are, I'm doing it correctly. I'm just throwing it on there because that's what it looks like. It looks good to me. I better put one more in the middle. Here, let me just grab some of this glue. And I'll put it right there. Okay, and on that note, we're going to sit back and let that dry. Hopefully this one end just a little bit. There we go. That's better. Oh, just a little bit. Okay, and we're going to let this dry, and I will be back when it's dry, and you can see what it looks like before I do anything else to it. Um, I might you know, do some on the front of this and maybe on this, so while I'm waiting for them all to dry. But that way you don't have to sit here and watch me go over this and do this again and again and again. So I will be back. Hi, I'm back. Um, it's mostly dry. Uh, the thicker parts of glue is still kind of um, you can see it. It's not quite invisible yet. And right now, I'm just taking my silver gel pen and making lines on 
the dots that I did. So it looks like screws. <clears throat> and I'll put them in a couple different spots. And this gel pen isn't it doesn't seem to work super well, although I could probably just go over it. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, this pen does not want to work very well. Let's see. See how that works on there. It's just not working really well on the foam, I guess. Oh. Yeah, I'll probably have to go over this a couple times. These I'm going to make Phillips. Which is just like a, an X. Well, that one didn't work. Okay. Might even make these some of these Phillips. Oh, we'll see. Okay. I'll leave that there for now. Just like that. Oh, let me see. Oh, this is it. Oh, that wasn't it, I think. Okay, it's got to be this one. I'm looking in my little drawer thing that my son gave me. trying to find the chain and stuff that I, I've got. There we go. Okay. Reason being is make some chains hanging except I can't find my wire cutters now oh. 
unless they're still over here. And they are. Right, yeah. Okay, those aren't wire cutters, those are pliers. Where's my wire cutters? Oh. Yes, I have needle nose that has the wire cutters in them at the bottom. That part. But they don't work as well. And these work much better better, which I'm going to move this over just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now I have some chain here. Oh, let's see. Boy, this is a mess. Alright, this looks like rusted chain. You see that? Um, I kind of want to, I really don't know much of what to do after this, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear, running it, you know, however I think I can, uh, let me get out another glue stick. I'm almost out of, but that's okay. Hopefully I'll be able to get some next week. Okay, there we go. Uh, this might look funny, but I kind of got it halfway upside down. And what I'm going to do is put, oh, come on, put a little bit of glue right there, and lay that in it, and press it down, and then put ah, let's see, no, there we go. can't see that very well. See, I got a chain going right there. But I don't want to leave it like that. So, uh, I really don't want to have to turn this thing upside down, but it looks like I might have to. Sorry if I'm out of screen. I'm just trying to push this up into the glue so the chain will hang. <clears throat> Let's see. Like that. And then I'm going to cut another piece off. Wow, this is all tangled. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna hang that up on the on the hook for now. And I don't know if I should use the straight up yeah, I think I'm just gonna use the straight up silver. Oh, let's make it a little bit longer. This one I'll probably have to do upside down, just so I can make sure it it's in the right spot. Ow, dead gummit! I just burnt myself. Okay. 
Now the reason I'm doing it upside down is so that when the glue cools and the chain is in it, it'll at least be in the right spot. Let me, uh, there we go. You know, like at least facing the same way. So it's hanging down instead of getting that little lip and then falling down. If that makes sense. Ooh, I really did burn my arm. Okay. Now, let's move this chain over. And then we'll put that right there and do the rest of it. Or the other piece. The other end. If I can get it in there before the glue cools. Okay, there we go. I'm going to use my... There. Okay. That should be... Yeah. Now let's see how that looks together. Got myself. Okay. Can you see that okay? Does that look alright with the chain? I'm thinking I need one more chain just to balance it out. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do the gold. This one is going to go on its side because I'm going to bring this up on the side. See where that comes to. And let's pull it up a little. I don't know, I don't seem very talkative today. <laughs> it's one of those things where you really just hope, you know, you can at least act like you know what you're doing. That is on there. Let's see how it looks with the third with the third chain. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Hold on, let me turn it for you. So what do you guys think? Um, I know I'll get my big fat hand out of the way in just a second. Anyways. So that with Koch for you guys. Now my next thing is I don't know if I should put gears around the windows or if I should find some oh you know what I have that uh, what's it called that drywall or cement tape or whatever that stuff is called I wonder if that would look good over the windows okay so let me pause this while I find it and I will be right back Okay, everybody. Um, I've been kind of farting around, not really knowing what I'm going to do with it. So I forgot where I stopped at a minute ago. 
and uh, I was just kind of bebopping and looking stuff up and trying to make it look good. So this is what I have so far. I even made me my own little bicycle to sit up front out of wire and gears. So let me turn it around so you can see that. Um, pull it up just a little. Okay, there you go. So that's what I have so far. Okay, and there's my little bicycle I made out of gears and wire. If you can see that. It's not going to focus. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There you go. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm not done. I'm going to touch this up with a little bit more paint. Okay. So I'm going to turn it sideways and show you what the side looks like. Now, I'm not finished. Okay, but this is what I've got so far. Um, I haven't really done much on the back. Other than this up here. I put some more cement tape over that. I think I think that's what I was looking for with cement tape. I was going to do the windows. I couldn't get them inside. But it looks like I did. Because oh, I, the way I painted it after I put it on. So I think that came out pretty cool. I said, I'm not done. Okay, here's the other side. But this is what I've got so far. Now, what I would really like, okay, is, like I said, I'm not finished. I'll probably putz around on it a little bit more. I'm waiting for a phone call and then... Uh, I'm going to get together with my steampunk buddy and we're going to, uh, I'm going to go over this with her and see what she thinks. But what I would really like to know from you guys is if this is something that you might be interested in or if you think it's good enough to go into an auction and what you think the starting price should be. Uh, like I said, I'm not finished. This is my first time ever doing this. Um, please be honest, but be gentle. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your patience and for watching me. I will, if I can remember, um, I will take a picture of the finished product and tack it onto the end of this video. I don't know how to do that, but I'm willing to figure it out when I'm completely done with it. But please, in the comments down below, uh, you know, if you like the video, of course, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, but let me know if you think this is something that would uh, go really well in an auction. Um, like I said, again, I'm not done, but... Thank you, everybody, for spending some time with me. And uh, always remember to find the humor in life, because if you don't, life sucks. And always give yourself the freedom to art yourself silly. Okay? On that note, I'm going to let you go. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think, and if you think it, it would be a good idea to put it in my auction. Um, and on that note, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.